When we talk about AI infrastructure, we immediately think about, uh, oh, NVIDIA's GPUs, the powerhouse behind today's massive training runs. But a big shift is coming on the way. New chip architectures built explicitly for AI are emerging to challenge GPUs and tomorrow's future of AI infrastructure. We have seen GPUs crush massive training runs for years, but the real game changer is in inference, the everyday engine of AI. And in this video, we are going to explore why GPUs are incredibly inefficient and inadequate for the future of AI inference, the likely biggest market and the biggest battleground in the future of AI infrastructure. And most importantly, we're going to look into how new companies, new hardware companies like Grok and Cerebras are moving to capture this new growing market. But first, let's try to understand why inference is so important. In fact, again, when we think of uh, the future of AI infrastructure, we really think about uh, training these gigantic models. And that is, of course, crucial and very important, but that happens once or twice. Whereas inference is something that happens every day, billions of times, every time you ask a question to ChatGPT or every API call that there is on a foundational models, you do inference, generative inference, which is why the vast majority of the experts seems to agree that the future of AI is going to be much more inference than it is training, actually more than 20 times bigger inference than training. And if you think about the GPUs, they are really the standard for both inference and training today. And among the GPUs, Nvidia has really stand out as the main player. But the thing about the GPUs is that they were not originally built for AIs and they are very good for training, but when you think about inference, they really have a lot of problems. There is essentially a mismatch between what GPUs are very good at and what we really need now. And GPUs are just the only thing that you can do in inference these days, that's why more than 40% of the GPUs that Nvidia sells are used for inference, because there is not much of an alternative in the market. But let's now dive deeper and try to understand why GPUs are so bad for inference. When we think about generative AI, the model spits out your answer token by token. And every single new token that's generated requires the model's weights to be adjusted every single time. So for large language models, so let's say a model with 70 billion parameters, well, every single token that the model generates can create up to 140 gigabytes of data movement. Again, for every single token in your answer. And the problem of the GPU's architecture is that the vast majority of the memory is uh, HBM, meaning it doesn't sit on the chip itself, it's off chip. So every single time you have to generate one token, which as we've seen, we has a lot of uh, data movement, 140 gigabytes, for example, then all of this data has to move from on-chip to off-chip. So from on-chip GPUs to off-chip HBM. And this is because of how GPUs architecture works. Essentially, GPUs are massively parallel and they really shine when you can batch a lot of data together. But when it comes to data movement, they are very inefficient because again, they have to move a lot of data off and on chip. You can really think of GPUs as a very powerful engine that is constantly waiting for the fuel to arrive. And this is essentially why only five to 7% of the GPUs is actually utilized during inference. It's because the token by token answer that you get, it's essentially a very, very small batch size, the opposite of what the GPUs really need, big batch sizes. But said simply, if you want to build an analogy, you can really imagine GPUs as a warehouse where all the items are stored very far from the assembly line. And if you have to work on big, large batches, that's fine because you can just grab a lot of stuff, put it in the warehouse and work it out. But the caveat is that if you have individual items that you have to ship constantly, like it is in the real time conversations with the chat GPT, for example, then all of the workers in the warehouse, they really spend much more time going back and forth taking the items to the warehouse rather than actually creating the product in the warehouse. And the result is that the workers spend more time on data transfer rather than actually assembly work. Now here is the revolutionary part. What if instead of having workers repeat repeatedly fetch small batches from the factory, from the warehouse to the storage, what if you could have a single linear conveyor belt? 
That is exactly what Grox is trying to do. Each station of the belt does one step of the assembly and then hands it off to the next station with the minimal travel time. Here is how Grox approach breaks down. First, everything moves in the same direction. Rather than pulling items from a big storage every few minutes, you have every single item that rides the conveyor and passes smoothly from one station to the other. This is exactly what eliminates all the waste that happens when you go from the storage to the warehouse. Second, the stations are all next to each other so there is no waste of time in traveling. There is no time wasted around because this is all happening continuously because items keep arriving into a steady stream so there is no waiting around and the utilization is so much higher than into the GPU's architecture because of this. And fourth, there is very minimal off-chip storage. In fact, in the GPU warehouse analogy, large weights and parameters live very, fra very far from the warehouse very far from the chip in storage which is the HBM so you have a lot of time to travel from the HBM to the chip but in Grox pipeline you rely heavily on local memory the data keeps flowing in one direction without back and forth without back and forth movement from the off memory to the on memory you can think of workers spending almost all of the time on the assembly line rather than moving the data that means a higher performance lower waste of energy and better suited for continuous tasks like AI agents or everything that's really application-based, which is inference. Jonathan Ross, which is the CEO of Grok, claims that their new architecture with LPUs can use only one-third of the energy to generate one token, compared to the standard GPU architecture. And if you multiply this by the billions of tokens that you generate every single day in inference, well, that's a lot of savings. In traditional GPUs, HBMs are a big bottleneck, but thanks to Grok's pipeline LPUs, LPU's approach, you fix all of that because there is zero reliance on HBMs. But now back to our analogy. Imagine that now you can have a gigantic mega factory when you can run all your big manufacturing operations. As we've seen in GPUs, all of your weights and parameters, they sit far from the warehouse and your factory is in a different building. Well, Cerebrus idea is to put a gigantic operation all under the same roof. Materials, machinery, everything under the same warehouse. So you do not build a lot of small factories one next to another, like like Grox, but you have a one single colossal factory with everything under it. This is what wafer scale engine do, is essentially one big chip where you can put all of your stuff on it. And if you want to put all of your stuff on it, well, first you start with the memory. We've seen that there is the problem of data movement. There is a lot of data moving around when you play with inference. So the first thing you want to put in this big factory is the storage that in the GPU's approach is very far. Now we put it directly on the factory. And how do we do that? Well, we use SRAMs. So again, we avoid the problem of having a lot of work moving back and forth from the HBM to the chip to having all of the stuff built on the chip through the SRAM, which is local memory. SRAM is like a physically big local memory that you can put only if you have a big chip. The result is that in this new warehouse, the workers don't have to waste the time to take the data and moving into the factory, but they're already there. The data is already there, so they can spend 100% of the time on actually building stuff. So if we go back to the problem of GPUs, having a lot of time wasted to moving the data now there is essentially zero wasted time because there is zero data movement all the data is already on the chip so every single time you have to generate one token and move the internal weights and move a lot of data you waste zero time and again the utilization is almost 100 percent so with the cerebras wafer scale mega factory it's as if your model stays on the same chip as the compute cores. So you are basically always in-house and each token is produced without the overhead of traveling off-site. So while Grox tackled the GPU problems by creating pipelines through LPUs, by creating LPUs that have a pipeline architecture, Cerebras uses a completely different approach that uses huge SRAMs that sit on the chip. In both cases, the data movement is essentially zeros and the utilization is super high. So where does all of these leave NVIDIA? Is GPU's empire dying? 
or at least risking to disappear? Well, I would say no, and in G GPUs will always be there for a training. Well, GPUs will always be the best alternative for a training, and training is still going to be an important part of the AI stack and AI infrastructure. But it really feels like the future of AI infrastructure is going to be in inference more than it's going to be on training. As the generative models, which need a generative inference, spread to every single industry that we know. Well, the scale of inference is going to be so high that, that really GPUs, because they are so inefficient and inadequate to do inference, well, the chances are that a lot of the value in the infrastructure layer is gonna shift from GPUs to more specialized architecture that are built exactly for AI. GPUs approach on HBM's memory, off-chip memory, is really super inefficient for inference, both in terms of cost, high cost, a lot of time to generate one token, and wasted electricity for all of the unutilized throughput during inference for GPUs. There are a lot of new companies that are starting to build more specialized architectures exactly for inference. Grok and Cerebras are two amazing examples of this. Whether it's Grok's pipeline design or Cerebras wafer scale design, there are starting to be new solutions for the huge inefficiencies of GPUs. I would argue they just need to mature a little bit more to then get the market share of inference away from NVIDIA's or away from GPUs to these more specialized architectures. And if we really are on the edge of an explosion in demand of it for inference, then I would argue that the incentive of making this new architecture mature faster is gonna be higher and higher and higher. And essentially what I'm saying is that NVIDIA has much more to lose than all of these new companies. Tools like ChatGPT are really the top of the iceberg. Voice assistant, AI agents, employees, real-time analysis in the supply chain, really there are so many applications that AI still has to get their hands into. But as soon as that will happen, demand for inference will really explode. And only GPUs really cannot handle all of that demand. But again, GPUs won't really disappear. They will always be there and will always dominate training. So what we will likely see is like a hybrid approach with a lot of big clusters like a colossus of GPU clusters that are perfect for training either new models or new versions of existing models. And then we will have more specialized data centers with this new architecture specialized and tailored only for inference. So yes, NVIDIA dominates and has dominated the era of deep learning so far. But with the new generative AI tsunami that is coming, we might very likely see companies like Grok and Cerebras start to grow much faster than NVIDIA's and most importantly take away the market share of NVIDIA's or GPUs in general from inference to only training. If you want to know more about inference versus training and why inference is really so important, click here before the end of the video. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you next time.